All right, toast's on, and we're microwaving. Can it do it? On the phone app, I'm gonna turn on ultra fast charging, and it says it will be fully charged from one to 100% in 0.9 of an hour. Anchor have been a trusted name in electronics for years now. I use several of their accessories for my phone and my MacBook and have used their Solix F1200 battery for about a year and a half now. It's actually sitting in my Jeep in Idaho at the moment. When Anchor asked me to do this video and send me a different battery, I obviously accepted. And just so we're all clear, this is a sponsored video. This is what just showed up on the doorstep. So uh, let's take a look inside. Always cut towards yourself. I think that's the rule, right? Must be Italian. A box within a box. And here it is. It's actually a lot smaller than my other one. In the box, I also get a user guide with a safety sheet. Looks like I scanned this for the instructions and a huge five-year warranty card. I also get another box, which I assume has more stuff in it. If I open this up, it looks like this is the charging equipment. Yep, charging stuff. We'll talk more about that later. This is the Anchor Solix C1000, a portable battery with 12 volt USB and 120 volt outputs. Obviously you can use it for whatever you want, wherever you want, but if you're watching my channel, you're probably gonna be using it for camping. Let's start with the form factor first. I could talk about the fancy ergonomics of the carrying handles and so on, but all I really care about is that the top is flat, it doesn't have one of those big goofy handles that gets in the way and makes it impossible to pack around so you can stack stuff on top of it. This and the fact that it's about 15% smaller than the industry average helps a lot when dealing with limited space in vehicles like our Jeep. The design of this casing is also apparently drop proof uh, and although I am pretty rough on my equipment that is not something that I have yet accidentally tested and isn't something that I plan to intentionally test either. On top, there is a light with three brightnesses. That's great if you wanna take this up into your tent since it gives great ambient light. If this is something that you want to see in person, Anchor will have it at the Southeast Adventure Vehicle Expo in Florida from March 1st through the 3rd in booth 104. I'll actually be there too, making a video, thanks to Anchor who are paying for me to go. My buddies at SHW Off-Road and Commonwealth 4x4 decided that they would come along too, so they will have my truck in booths 221 and 223, and will actually be using this battery to run their stuff, like their point of sale. Inside this is a 1056 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which is the equivalent to just over 80 amp hours at 12 volts. And I know that the battery inside here is not actually 12 volts, so you don't need to tell me that, uh, but it is the equivalent to 80 amp hours. And that is plenty for most users. That'll keep a fridge running for several days or more, depending on the ambient temperatures. It'll charge your phone dozens of times and is just enough to run a couple of heated blankets overnight. If your needs change in the future, it's actually expandable too. Let's say you get Starlink or suddenly start charging a ton of drone batteries. Uh, you can get an add-on that sits on top and it doubles the capacity of this up to 2,112 watt hours. Lithium iron phosphate is known for its longevity and the smart management tools in this allow Anchor to offer you a five year warranty on the battery and is designed to last a decade of everyday use. To use that power, there are three commonly used options. Under the display screen here, which I've set to be always on, you have a regular USB, actually you have a couple of regular USB outputs, which are great for charging small things like phones or running small lights, but you also have 
two powerful USB-C ports, which are ideal for charging or running something like a MacBook, a Steam Deck, or a Switch. There is, of course, the 10 amp, 12 volt output. This is perfect for running a fridge, mattress pump, and so on, you know, anything that you're gonna plug into the 12 volt outlet in your vehicle. Uh, it will also run some diesel heaters, although I have noticed that a lot of the cheap ones actually pull more than 10 amps when starting up. So uh, some of those cheap ones will not work with this. The solution to that is to use a 20 amp, 12 volt converter that's plugged into one of the six AC outputs. A friend of mine was actually using his diesel heater that way last weekend, and it was pulling over 240 watts while starting up, which is almost 20 amps. That's insane for a diesel heater, but it is actually no big deal for the inverter in here, which is rated at 1,800 watts and can deal with up to 2,400 watts with the surge pad. Let's do my favorite thing now and plug in random things, starting with you know normal stuff that you might use and then moving up to some unrealistic stuff in order to get an idea of what that number means. So I've got myself an assortment of things that I usually charge while out camping. Uh, but the very first thing that I need to plug in is the camera. You guys are about to run out of battery. You're down to 7%. So I'm gonna come around and fix you. All right, hold still. The second thing is a fridge from Iron Man, because let's face it, we leave these fridges plugged in all the time. So it makes sense to get one plugged in and cooling while we do everything else. This is a 65 quart dual zone. Um, this may have to go on the floor. So I've got the fridge plugged in and running now. I've unplugged the camera because I want to see how much it's pulling. Uh, it looks like the fridge, i uh, got one side set to the freezer at negative 22 degrees Celsius and the other side set to three degrees Celsius for a fridge. Um, if you want to convert those to Fahrenheit, you can. You can go to Google and find out. Um, with them both running, it looks like about 35 to 38 watts. So that gives us 26 and a half hours of runtime if the fridge was running constantly, uh, which they never do. Um, you know, they at very most in the hottest conditions you're gonna get like maybe they're running about a third of the time. So I would guess probably about three days worth of runtime from this in the absolute hottest conditions. Um, so now let's plug in some more stuff that I might normally plug in and get running. Um, so obviously I fly the drone nonstop, so we're gonna get those charging as well. Uh, we'll plug that into the high output. USB-C there, so they can charge. Uh, and then we'll get some of my other cameras going as well. Uh, this is my new Action Cam Ace Pro. It is excellent, way better than GoPro. Recommended if you're looking for an Action Cam. Uh, but it needs charging up too, so we'll plug that in there. All right, so got those charging. Uh, and while all that's charging, uh, oh, I've got one more USB output. Oh, you know what I do need to charge? I need to charge the MacBook. All right now it's running my teleprompter. It's running what's just sitting here on. Sorry camera, you've had your chance. You're, uh, you're getting unplugged. Hopefully you last long enough. So let's plug in the MacBook now. Uh, oh, you know what? We can plug the camera into the MacBook. There, so now it's charging that, which is charging that. So obviously you can handle charging through all of the ports just fine, uh, but let's try plugging in some stuff into the AC outputs that I might realistically use, or you might realistically use while out camping. Uh, and we'll start with um, a little more charging stuff. So uh, one of the things that I found myself using is my electric chainsaw, no problem. Uh, so this is a little 200 watt heater that I picked up on Amazon. Uh, doesn't put out a ton of heat, but it's decent. If you've got a good little surface to put it on in your rooftop tent, then uh, you can heat inside. It's already really hot in here, so I don't know if I want this running. Pulling uh, an extra 200 watts now. You might judge me for this one, but we've actually found ourselves taking and using a microwave while we are out camping. Uh, since we've had our kid, our little toddler, uh, he likes his mac and cheese. Uh, it's just so much quicker and easier in a microwave and taking care of him means less time for preparing meals. And we found that uh, microwave meals actually taste pretty good while you're out camping. So we've started taking this. So let's see how it handles a small microwave. Um, let's just do 30 seconds. 
answers. Yes, it can handle microwave just fine. Uh, so this microwave is pulling about uh, just over a thousand watts. I can hear the fan in this thing whirring up. So it's not quiet when you are charging it fast uh, or when you're pulling a lot of power. The fan does really get going. I don't know if you can hear, it sounds like it's taking off. Let's take my little microphone off and hold it close. There, and now it's no longer pulling as much power in the microwave as this thing's coming to land. Oh, and the fan's just turned off in it. So yeah, it can run a microwave just fine. Another thing that I use a lot, not while I'm out on the trail, but I use these battery packs for, is a heat gun. Um, because when I am installing wiring in my vehicle, I don't want to have to run an extension cord out from the house to it. So I take one of these out and plug in the heat gun. Uh, so let's see, these things pull a lot of power. We'll get it running. This one is a 1500 watt heat gun for indoor use only. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's pulling almost 1500 watts, but this thing is running it just fine. Sounds like it's taking off again. You can hear the fan probably. Now something I don't do is coffee, but I'm sure a lot of you want to know if this will run a coffee machine. Uh, I don't have a coffee machine because I don't drink coffee, but this thing boils the water so it's going to use like basically the same amount of power. Uh, this is a kettle, so we'll turn that on and get it boiling water. Uh, and you'll see it pulls a lot of power, so it's pulling more power than the heat gun did. Right now we're up to about 1600 watts. And it looks like it's handling fine. We'll, we'll leave that running and we'll see what the maximum power draw is. And I'll let you know in a minute. All right, that is it. It is done boiling and it peaked at about 1600 watts and we used several percentages of power and we're back down to 90, uh, which is what the base charging of all of this stuff is. So uh, yes, you can use coffee makers with this. Uh, coffee makers aren't gonna use nearly as much power as that because this thing is basically full. So you used a ton of power to get it uh, fully hot heated. And now I've got one more thing that I've never used on the trail, but you know, maybe someone out there does. Maybe someone needs to use a toaster because they just gotta have their toast in the morning or gotta make their pop tarts or whatever it is that they're making. Uh, so yeah, oh, no, no problem. This is easier than the kettle pulling uh, about a thousand watts and it smells like smoke because I think I disturbed all the crumbs in there. So now I think the only thing left to do is try and trip the breaker in this. So we're gonna plug in as much stuff as possible uh, before the AC power cuts out. So uh, let's start with the smallest things. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're gonna trip it pretty quickly because I've got a lot of high power items here. So it's not gonna have any problem plugging in to charge our chainsaw battery, and I think this little 200 watt heater is gonna be no issue either. So we'll get both of those plugged in right away and power it up so we can make it even hotter in here. So let's go with the microwave next. And then I think once we plug in the toaster, we're probably gonna end up tripping that. We'll just do the microwave by itself first. Let's do it for, oh, I did it for a minute. There we go. Yeah, so no problems running in that. So I'm charging, I've got the heater going, I've got the microwave running. So let's stop that for a second and we'll put the toaster on top. And this is where I think it's gonna fall apart. I don't think it's gonna be able to handle doing the microwave and the toaster at the same time. All right, toast's on and we're microwaving. Can it do it? So far, yes. Oh, we're right at the limit. Oh, we're over the limit. We're going over 1800 watts. We're at 2,331, uh, not just using the surge pad. <laughs> it can do it. Wow, okay. Guarantee the next thing I plug in breaks it. Let's plug in the heat gun, turn it on. There we go, we did it. So, if you really want to, while you're out on the trail, you can charge your chainsaw batteries, run your 200 watt heater, make some toast and run your microwave all at the same time uh, while also charging drone batteries, your laptop, running the camera, charging this other camera, 
Uh, oh, and your fridge, all at the same time. Yeah, that's a little excessive. Good thing is that even after the AC inverter trips, my drone batteries are still charging just fine. The fridge is still running, no problem at all. All that stuff's completely separate. One of the nice things about the outputs is that you can run them when the battery is plugged in and charging. Uh, since we moved to our current house that I'm in now, uh, we've had the power go out pretty much every time there is a windstorm or an ice storm. So what I do is if I know the weather's gonna be bad, I'll plug the fridge into the anchor battery and then plug the anchor battery into the wall to keep it charged. And that way, if the power goes out in the night, I'm not gonna notice, uh, but we won't lose any of our food because the fridge stays powered. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I actually wanted a second battery uh, since my other one's currently sitting in a Jeep in Idaho and I'm here in Kentucky. So now I've got a spare. Actually, I'm probably gonna switch them out because I like how small and compact this one is. Once you've used your power a little, you're gonna want to see how much is left. And you can do that on the screen here, which like I said, I've set to always be on. Uh, it shows the current charge percentage. So this one's at 100%. It'll show the incoming charge, the outgoing power, and it will also show you how much time is left until it runs out or it's fully charged. If this is buried in the back of the vehicle, you can also use the phone app instead, which shows you all of the same things. So right now, it shows that it is 100% charged and I can use this to control the charging. So I've got the option to turn on and off ultra fast charging there. And I can also scroll down and use it to control some of the outputs. So you can see there, I've got the option to turn on and off the AC and the DC output and the light that's on the front too. You can actually change the AC charge speed on this. So when you plug it in to the AC charger here, it is set to 1000 watts by default as the charge speed, but you can lower that down all the way to 200 watts. That's useful if your vehicle has an inverter that you want to charge from. So for example, my Forerunner that I used to have had a 400 watt inverter. I could change the charge speed on here to 400 watts. And that would allow me to plug this in to the Forerunner's AC inverter and charge this a lot faster than just plugging into the 12 volt input. There are three and a half options for charging this thing. And the reason I say half is because there are two speeds uh, to charge or that you can choose from to charge from the wall. Uh, the first option is really fast 1000 watt charging. And then the second option is the ultra fast charging, which is even faster at 1300 watts. With the 1300 watt hyperflash charging, you can fully charge this from zero to 100% in under an hour. You can also plug this into 12 volt DC using this input to charge, uh, which is how I've been charging the other one in the Jeep, and that's how I'll be charging this in the Jeep when I'm driving with it. Or you can use this to plug it into up to 600 watts of solar panels. Let's see how long this takes to fully charge. So I'll plug it in, Give it a second, and then on the phone app, I'm gonna turn on ultra fast charging, and it says it will be fully charged from one to 100% in 0.9 of an hour. Let's leave this going and we'll come back in an hour. This just finished charging, and according to my timer, it took exactly 58 minutes. Finally, Anchor Solix will be launching their Adventure Assembly program on February 26th this year. That's the day this video is going out, where they're giving people the opportunity to win a camping kit with free gear with a fully paid for dream expedition. You can get some more details by scanning the QR code that's on the right hand side of the screen here, or clicking the link in the description. Thanks for watching.